The word of the Lord says in the book of John chapter 8 verse 36, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. God has done it several times before and he can do it again. And you are the next in line for a miracle. Join Bishop Dr. Taiwan Pastor Mrs. Ireti Akinola on the interdenominational and transnational weekly program, Freedom Across the Airwaves. Every Saturday, 7 p.m. GMT plus one on the Zoom platform, YouTube, and on Facebook. This is your time for freedom from all oppressions of the wicked. This is your time to experience the abundance, the blessings, and the prosperity of heaven. Invite your friends and invite your family. It's your time for a miracle. In Jesus' name, amen. Ero ya ba mi kalo Rema Christian Church and to waso Eh, ibe shalom lo nu wa o Olorun bo adura gan se ti bo Ero ya ba mi kalo Odo Bishop Dr. Tai Rema Christian Church and to waso Asi pastor e pray ti aki ola Ibe shalom lo nu wa o is the hallmark of the kingdom. Have you sad story of barrenness, sickness, poverty, and oppression? Marital delay. Change a glorious testimony. Meet with Jesus and encounter the Holy Spirit for a definite change at the Moment of Victory program. Hold it every second Saturday of the month at Rema Christian Church and Towers Campground, City of Zion, along Lagos Abelkuta Expressway. Wow, see me. Time is 10 a.m. You can still dance to the victory song. Only believe. Ministry, Bishop Taiwo and Pastor Mrs. Iriti Akiola. God is a God of victory.
as a people, as a church, as families, as individuals, we bow before you, take our praise in Jesus' name. Thank you for this year that you have proclaimed as a year of supernatural expansion. I ask, Father, we will not disappoint you this year in Jesus' name. And as you keep on laying your words upon our lives, line by line, precept upon precept, I pray, Lord, that, Lord, our destiny will respond in the precious name of the Lord Jesus. And, Lord, you will unfold our wings. We will soar. We will fly. We will exp expand. We will manifest. And your glory will be built up in us. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Will you say one loud amen now? Amen. Welcome to the house of God. This is Rema Christian Church, the glorious assembly of Jesus people, a people of power, purity and purpose. Amen. And I'm teaching on wisdom for supernatural expansion. Wisdom for supernatural expansion. Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah 54, verses 1 to 5. Saying, O barren, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing, and cry aloud, thou that didst not travel with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Enlarge the place of thy tents. Let them stretch forth the curtain of thy habitation. Spear not. Lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy takes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left. And thy, side, thy sea shall inherit the Gentile and make desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not. For thou shalt not be ashamed. Neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. Hallelujah. Wisdom for supernatural expansion. As far as God is concerned, He wants us take to be expanded this year. He saw that as a fitting, a fitting vision. That's what He want to do with us. But over the years, I've discovered only those who see the importance of getting something done get going to do it. Those who don't have vision for accomplishment always have plenty of excuses. The word of God has gone forth. He really wants for us to expand. We must cooperate with them. Now, in a passage I just read, particularly, look at verse number two. It says, Enlarge the place of thy tent. Now, it was speaking there to a woman referred to in verse number one. The woman there was a barren woman who has suffered shame, who has suffered reproach because of her condition. And see that part very clearly. She was now told to rejoice and shout. God said she was go he was going to open a womb. And God said he was going to surpass even those who have gone ahead of her in terms of numbers of children. Now, I need to rush to put this to you, God pe people. I'm fully aware that this was a prophetic writing. We're talking about the church in general. But it has applicability for you and I today. You know, when the church of Jesus Christ started, it was like a barrier. It was like, what are they doing? Who is this Jesus? The Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes, they didn't give him a chance. 
They didn't think that there was anything that was going to come out of it. But lo and behold, because of this prophecy, and many such that we find in scripture, now, this, the church of Jesus Christ, in case you have never been told, is the largest religious movement in the world. They're very largest. None come very, very close to it. Now, what am I talking about? God was saying, barren woman, reproached, put to shame, rejoice, because your tomorrow is wonderful. Now, the application is this. You may have been going through some reproach. The years before now may not have been offering you your heart expectations. You may have gone through some seasons of perplexity. But God is saying, rejoice. Now, the word of God that came to that woman then was to release her faith, was to foundate her expectation, was to make her know that the season has come for change. I'm very happy, ladies and gentlemen, that we are standing right now within the borders of supernatural expansion. We are standing right now and God wants for us to experience something that our future self will thank us for. Very, very happily. It is God himself who said it. It's a year of supernatural expansion. Help me use your mouth to say to somebody, say supernatural expansion. Say it louder, let me hear it. Say, it's the word of God. Now, remember and recall it, supernatural expansion talks of is spreading out an unfolding of your wings to fly a development or expressing the reach of your destiny yes you go on to broaden you out in a fuller form supernatural expansion also means unfolding the horizon of your life in greater detail in all ramification and beyond any human imagination I've been saying that this encloses all dimensions of life all things that have to do with life and godliness so go on for you and I to expand spiritually in the reach of your relevance to the things of the kingdom in the power you can command in prayer in the authority of ease that you can enjoy spiritually materially materially financially financially intellectually socially he wants you to expand in your business in your faith in your family in all that you do god almighty wants you to expand i'm praying for you today you will not be a disappointment but this will take the holy spirit and that is super in the supernatural that's what is superior to the natural you know in the natural world metals expand when it is exposed to heat in the natural world minds of men expand when it's exposed to higher experiences and that's why yoruba man would normally say you can have you can have clothes more than um, an elderly person you can have rags more than him the higher you go, the older you become, the much more experienced you become. And so, the horizon of your mind naturally expands with age. However, in the realm of the spirit, you need the radiance of the Holy Spirit. Radiance of the Holy Spirit to bring you all around expansion. The Almighty God wants you and I to expand this year. I have prayed and I'm still insisting. In the name of the Lord Jesus if you can say your own louder amen you will not be a disappointment it takes the holy ghost to bring any man all around expansion and when he is involved the first thing he does is eject all illegal occupiers of your life space everything that has um, filled the space of spaces of your life your mind your thoughts your imagination he evicts them and then he broadens out your horizon and enlarges your coastlines of destiny there's someone here in Rema Christian Church this year in the name of the Lord Jesus you will expand I say you will expand 
your testimony will be magnified however now in verse number two of that passage he says um let's get it again is it enlarge the place of your tent and so there's something to do and that's the work of wisdom there's something to do that is talking of wisdom so preparing for en enlightenment it is wisdom whenever god expands your horizon you are changed you become changed you are naturally changed you are changed from failure to success change from nobody to somebody change from emptiness to um, abundant change from few to plenty and you are changed from big to even bigger god does not leave you on the same foot it, it meets you no it doesn't however please catch it wisdom is needed single barren woman that that is not beer but verse 2 is it enlarge the place of your tent and so there's something to do about it so that's the place of wisdom it's very essential in the cause of supernatural expansion i spoke a lot along the line on wednesday the bible said to us he said by wisdom is a house builded anything that must be built we have the input of wisdom wisdom is bible says it's a principal thing we, you know you, you we all know where there is no principal that can be no interest you calculate accruable interest usually based on principal a principal is in there there can be no interest you want to make profit by your life living here on earth let wisdom be there the price of ignorance is destruction and lack he said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge they are honorable men famish the price of ignorance is destruction and lack but the profit of wisdom is supernatural enrichment and legendary increase legendary increase legendary increase as i'm speaking to you i'm asking the lord by the power of the holy spirit to open you up and load up supernatural wisdom in you i said this year you shall be wise sir i said this year you shall be wise sir in the precious name of the lord jesus so wisdom is it if you must expand you cannot eliminate or forget or ignore or stand down or condemn or contempt the place of wisdom you must give it a primal place now we want to to be able to um, sieve out required wisdom we want to find a, a, a story in scripture a passage of scripture all right a storyline that fits into the mold of wisdom for expansion in second kings in chapter number six i want you to read with me everybody open your bible there and i believe that um the media can roll down for us if they are there second kings chapter six we want to read verses one to seven second kings chapter number six verses one to seven all right if your bible is not bold enough you can flow with us from the screen let's read together can i hear you from verse one and the sons of the prophet said unto elisha behold now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us let us go we pray thee unto jordan and take things every man a beam and let us make us a place there where we may dwell and he said go ye and one said the content i pray thee go with thy servant and he said i will go so he went with them and when they came to jordan they cut down wood but as one was felling a beam the axe head fell into the water and he cried and said alas master for it was borrowed the man of god said where fell it and he showed him the place and he cut down a stick and cut it in teether and the iron did swim therefore said he take it up to thee and he put out his hand and took it praise the lord now look up here keep that story that story will keep you on the course of wisdom from that passage we have informed that the sons of the prophet um dwell in a place where uh, that now it had become very narrow very tight by the time you married maybe you are living in a room and a parlor 
Now you have five children. That woman and Palo cannot take you. That was what we had here. The national prophetic school was growing in lift and bound. And the sons of the prophet said, the place is too narrow. And they said, let's do something about it. Just like in the wisdom that we read in Isaiah chapter number 54, he said, enlarge your dwelling place. All right? Your, your stakes are not found for ready for expansion. Expand it. There must be something to do. And so the sons of the prophet here started with wooden, uh, wisdom bullet number one with a strong desire. It wasn't even their prophet that told them. It was they that desired the expansion. And so the first card of wisdom that anyone, any man, any woman, any church, any being, any organization, any individual, any family wants that that want to experience supernatural expansion must all tie onto and play with is strong desire. Help me say to somebody say strong desire. That's wisdom number one. Wisdom number one. Why is that basic? Why is that fundamental? It's because every real change if you find here on earth begins with a burning desire. If you don't desire anything, it doesn't matter to you. If you don't desire change, it doesn't matter to you. And it will be a burning, strong desire. A weak desire will not inspire you to pay the necessary price for the desired change. You must be fed up with the level in which you have found yourself. Now, there's one problem that people have, that level identity. They say, where have you, where are you living? Is that a you know that house now in 1968 when you came visiting us you see that's is it how you know my room now as you as you turn to the right that level identity now until you get fed up with where you are you won't do whatever it takes to achieve something bigger and better you must be fed up with level identity until you de your desire becomes a decision, it doesn't take off. Your mind must be made up that you will not be exempted from expansion this year. Materially, financially. Your life must begin to count. Look up here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm talking of expansion in all ramifications. If you have been rich, but your life is meaningless to God, if you are healthy, and God cannot count on you, you are not holistically expanded. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. And so God Almighty wants you to expand holistically. He wants your life to be meaningful to the advancement of his kingdom. Even as you are rich and healthy and meaningful, you are not. And, and you stand socially tall for God to be glorified in you. But the fourth part of wisdom is desire. Help me say to somebody, desire. There was one man who wrote a poem many years ago. I won't bother my head to be saying this is the man. All of us here know him. We, we read it when we were in secondary school. He said, may your road be rough. Of course, when we had it then, we do like, hand, hand like you say, no, never. I don't want my road to be rough. The reality is, for as long as you have something you are holding on to, you may never enjoy betterment. I'm reminding the house here today, I mean, the, the first house, um, well, the first house I rented was in, um, in um, Oluring Street. Then we moved to somewhere on the way to, um, where do you call that place now? On the way to Wode, eh? Iyano. We moved somewhere there. Now, the landlord was good when we started. But when God wanted to do something better with my life, the landlord changed gear. Once in a while, around 7 a.m., it would just come up. We, we were living on the ground floor, and it will, it will say, say, all of you tenants, all of you men and women, I don't care. Take broom and swim, sweep. All of you. My wife is there, my children were there. I say, all of you men and women, I don't care. I thought it was a joke. I said, well, this mom must be saying something to me. 
It became a little bit caustic along the line. I told myself, I said, we are moving out from here. So we were blessed to rent um, a house there on this Okewale Street. Guess what? Two things move out from here. Now, the fourth thing was, at time, that time I was using a Benz. I told you the story of the Benz and I used to enjoy the Benz. All right, when we bring out the Benz, I mean, I will put the DJ and then, you know, the thing will just be doing like that. But once I moved out, I think the one of the landlord, members of the association of landlord there, all right, he used to watch me when I moved out. Very funnily, it was a landlord, true, true. But you know, some of those landlords that you, you lay foundation for four rooms and then you finish one. You know what I'm talking about? But it was a landlord. And he would look at her and say, all oh, this tenant jati jati in this place. Uh -uh. It was so regular. The house was like three houses away from us. So I think whenever I kicked my car, he was always trying to, and he was saying it to my, about three times. All this tenant jati jati. So I don't know whether it was my car that was wounding him. And of course, the thing that was going to, the, the, the thing that was going to seal the storm, one day the rain, rain was terrible and somebody blocked the, um, the flood drain. And the whole place became flooded. For about two weeks, nobody could approach the place. When you want to move, you know, you roll your sleeve. And then as you are moving, something was inside the water that was biting people. So the thing will be biting you as you are watching. I say, oh my God. I said, something must happen here. And I began to think very seriously and sensitively. I said, I must have a place of my own. That was where the vision of the um, Gladstone House, the small place where we stay now, that's where the vision began. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Adaniloro Fagbarakone. So sometimes when God wants to help you, he makes certain things uncomfortable for you. But if you are too comfortable, you think, well, hallelujah to the glory of God. If I just phone my uncle now in America, I pray that your American uncle will no more send you that dollar. Because why? Until he keeps on sending it to you, you will not become a man of your own. The man is walking almost to death to be able to send you the 100 and say this to the glory of God is 100 dollars 100 dollars desire to be a hero of your own desire to stand with God God Almighty said the Lord shall increase you who will increase you say the Lord he didn't say your uncle or your brother or whatever he said the Lord shall increase you more and more amen Wise up. Evan says something. Say, wise up. Some even draw the ridiculous phenomenon to a very, very strange extent. They say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Even if Bishop doesn't want my uncle to bless me, I have labored over my children. And Yoruba man pray that white woman. And so now I don't need any expansion. Let me just remain like this. And my children will be taking care of me. Wise up. Wise up. Because if you don't plan for your future today, you'll be disappointed when future will come. Your children will think of their own future. They'll think of their own children. I, I want to ask all of you here, how many of you have built houses for your parents? They sent you to school. How many of you bought cars for your parents? I, I didn't have the privilege, my father, mother had died now. Maybe now I would have been thinking about it, but they had died. They labored. They saw Worobo to send us to school. But you see, the reality is that your children, even if they want to, they may not have the wherewithal. Even when they have the wherewithal, their own challenges and their own um, particular responsibilities may not be able to make them plan for your future today. Amen. Plan. They say, Bishop, I don't, for all that you are saying, I, I like it, but this one, I think my children should be taking care of me. You stop that and drop it. Drop it. It is that kind of um, idiocy that makes some people to become alarmingly when they are old. Don't you see some of them on the road, very, very old and aged person? And people will now be filled with pity and empathy to now give them thorough cover. Old people, they didn't plan like this. God said, expand the Lord. Let me say the Lord will increase me say me and my children say more and more come and say say more and more hallelujah desire it and determine to act on it you mustn't die like this if you don't continue life with you like this no matter what you are who you are what you have had 
you can become better and you can also have more if you pursue it with strong desire that's bullet number one every shout of somebody say desire tell him say desire to be better say desire to be bigger say desire that is the first part of wisdom and supernatural expansion it doesn't matter who prays for you when wisdom is not there good things are not served you are you aware jesus is the wisdom of god is the one who has been from ages is the one who laid the foundation of the earth and in himself he teaches us the way things work here on earth plan for your future the future will come but if you don't plan for it now if you don't lay solid foundation for it the house won't stand number two wisdom is you must walk and walk smart on your life's objective walk and walk let me say to you say walk and walk on your life's objective that's very next to desire of the path of wisdom for expansion everyone that i've ever met i could see on them the signature of god you are made to make a difference upon the earth you must embrace opportunity to do so this is an opportunity we're learning the wisdom of god now when we say walk and walk smart what are we saying you must schedule wise actions or wise action step to achieving your goals in life schedule wise action steps to achieve your goals in life you must look for better ways of doing what job you are doing now that will cut down time and reduce the energy you spend needed to get the job done it's important to walk let me say to him say walk but walk smarter now we found this from that storyline we read bible said the sons of the prophet you know decided to use an axe to cut down the beam they saw the need to expand but they also used an axe there are many ways you can cut you can use to cut down a tree hello imagine any tree any tree you can use a table knife hello just be cutting it like that you may spend like five months but the tree will cut will come down as a matter of fact if you have no um care if you don't pity your teeth you can even use your teeth say three times in a day i will be biting this tree you come and nine of the poor nine they see in the morning afternoon and evening do it like one year the tree may come down you can use cutlass. What there, there are two types of cutlass cutlasses. There's one that is hard and strong, and there's what they call your jag bar, the one we use to cut shrubs. You can use that one too. But the sons of the prophet here chose wisely. Let me say they chose wisely. They told them said they were going to use an axe. Now it is a given. In every house there are knives. You use knife to chop onion. Is that not right? They must have had knife there, but they said, well, we are good. Though we don't have what to use, but we're going to borrow it. I see. That's where that wisdom sometimes in borrowing for investment in the future. The only thing is that you mustn't borrow just to consume it on your lot. Anyway, that by the way. Now they borrowed an ask because it's wiser to use. But look at me here. In our today's world, we probably have something better to use. There's a motorized chainsaw tell me say chainsaw tell me say chainsaw tell me say motorized chainsaw you can do the work neater and better safer and faster all right you just hear, and then before you know what's happening to you die that's all that's all praise the lord and so the sons of the prophet they chose to be smarter in their course of war they chose to do it faster they they said to themselves we are not going to sleep in the bush our objective is to train as prophets under this national prophet but you know we have only a short time let's do it neat and, and sharper look at me god people the law of success demands that you get ready to pay the price for what you want to succeed in it's a law it's a standing law of success and um, the basic law of expansion requires that you do more 
than you have been doing and do it better if you desire increase it is not just a song increase increase or a quotable quote the law will increase you you must be ready to do more than you have been doing and do it smarter there must be increased someone suggested many years ago he said there is no place here on earth where you know success comes before work except in the dictionary a b c d e f g h i j k l m r p k r s so s come before w so you find success before work when you are opening the dictionary now but in reality what come before success help me tell you say walk that's the pathway to success ladies and gentlemen if you want to see expansion you must work and work smart there's no success on earth without work the life the life this life rewards actions it rewards work and punishes indolence if you are careless and indolent it doesn't matter how sweet the name of jesus is in your mouth if you are indolent the world will punish you and some people are who are just who are just lazy lazy if you are not found at your duty post if, you know even in spiritual matter if you are a pastor and you, you are in pastoring you are deacon you are in deaconing you are a believer you are not showing signs of a believer winning souls and so on and so forth you are simply lazy the reality of supernatural blessing can be full of the you if you find a student who is under preparing is a given that student will fail better is all we come for the student only when he learns to prepare harder are you hearing what i'm talking about now look up here supernatural expansion places a demand on your physical emotional and financial resources supernatural expansion is wisdom to know don't go to sleep and say well god bishop said god will expand me supernaturally and then go to sleep no it will make demands on your physical your emotional and your financial resources if all that you have is main contribution you can only attract average result why success is directly proportional to inputs success is what the more your input the more your success success is directly proportional to input help me look at somebody say brother say walk say brother work smarter on your objectives in life now if you want to multiply your result increase your input in all areas if you want the favor of god for example increase your readiness and your committedness to doing his will if he asks you to evangelize evangelize now look up here everybody let nobody deceive you don't say that we are doing prayer we are doing if you are not involved in evangelism if as a church if we refuse to evangelize the church will never grow no matter how hard we pray because there must be walk and then walk and then walk jesus said i must walk the works of him that sent me while day then i come it when no man shall walk amen you want to see my boggling result all that you need to do is work harder and smarter you want um, your financial income to astronomically increase obey the provision of god the position that god has put in place he said give and it shall be given to you good measure press down shaking together running over shall men give to your bosom so if you want financial increase what you need to do simply is also to significantly increase your offering significantly increase your commitment to tighten significantly increase your commitment to a lifestyle of giving that, that's given it's a, it's a given look at me god people there are some wonderful wonderful champion adorable champion beautiful gracious people look at me are you looking at me here now the year 2022 we end the year any other year has ended for a man who is lazy
Someone said, Time has no gun to mark his passage. The moment you want change, what do you do? You change yourself. Until you are ready to commit more to doing what God wants done, nothing will be given to a man who is lazy. Hallelujah. Now, I know somebody said, Bishop, well, where is the place of prayer? Thank you. That's a very good question. I'm aware divine assistance is available to those who ask. Jabez asked from God, God answered him, but please, prayer, yes, it can move the hand of God to give you my boggling result. However, it is going to come on what you do. Prayer rather brings blessing on what you do. Let me say to somebody, say prayer, bring blessing on what you do. I know there are not many fools like that in Nigeria, and so we don't see them often. But a man will now do prayer and fasting for seven days, and then the next time he now go to bank. He say, "Hallelujah, praise the Lord." Omida, Omida, daughter, have you ever seen? It? Since you have been working in bank, have you ever seen anybody like that? He say, "Omida," he say, "Why?" He say, "I fasted seven days." Oriye daru, Oriye wale. And so that's just to let you know prayer does not replace work prayer does not take the place of work let me say to somebody say prayer does not take the place of work so tell him say prayer rather blesses the work of your hand amen it brings the blessing of god on what you do prayer brings the blessing of god on what you do and that's why you must be up and doing something let me look at someone say you must be up and doing something Tell that I say you must be up and doing something. I hate some African men who think that well, they say, well, life itself is a privilege. If you are rich, just like Bishop said, if you are rich, if you are rich, it's privilege. It's God who gave it to you. And then they will be reading old newspaper, they cross their leg, the wife will go, I'm a girl, I'm a girl, I'm a hawk, the wife will go to, if, in some culture, it's their wife that will go to farm and farm, and they will be dripping pame at home. Just bring money and then just come and feed me. And they will be they will be bold enough to ask, where is my food? Ah, oh Igida. Bible says a man that will not walk should not eat. Check it's inside the Bible. Everybody shout and say, walk. Say walk. I know that um, somebody's weak law is being touched now. Um, Anka, what can I can do? I can do one. It will want for now. See, say, why must you tell me to walk? I mean, I think you talk be talking of favor. There's a place for favor, there's a place for walk, walking, walking. Yeah, wisdom, praise the Lord. So, the sons of the prophet they didn't say, Well, we are spiritual, we are sons of the prophet. They say, Let us, you know, do something about it. You must do something about your life. Now, very most importantly, I discovered in this particular passage, we found that the team of the sons of the prophet worked for the expansion of their prophetic school. The prophetic school then was the place where God see what his eyes were there. Elisha was the national prophet. And they were working for the expansion of that school. It wasn't anything personal. John, like a man laboring for the expansion of the house of God, laboring for the expansion of the kingdom of God, that man automatically qualifies for supernatural favor. Let me show you, God people, that the key to kingdom rewards is work. So we say the key to kingdom reward is kingdom service. Say so again, say the key to kingdom reward is kingdom service. The Bible says, I found David my servant. I found who? My what? With my holy oil, I anointed him. Amen. I will help him. I'll be there in his before him. But I found him serving me. Now, the key, major key to kingdom reward is kingdom serving. In Revelation chapter 3, verse number 8, he said, I know thy work. I know what? I know what? 
I know thy work. Behold, I've set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. Amen. Revelation 3 8. It is there I know thy idleness. It is there I know that I know thy memes. It is there I know thy ability to, to just glance through um, telephone. It is there I know your ability to grumble or to complain. It is there I know your ability to just look down um, and grumbling. He said, I know thy works. Behold, I have set an open door before thee, and no man shall shut it. Tell me, say that's God talking. Okay, tell me, say that's our God for you. Help me preach to someone. Say that's our God for you. Then say it rewards your kingdom. Work. I know your works. Uh -huh. If your life is not counting for God, the God of the work won't bless you. If you're a member of Rema Christian Church and there's nothing traceable to you except that you come late on Sunday, once in a while, and then the only thing when you sit, even at the very far back, you are looking at the chairs and you are creatively criticizing those who should have dotted the chairs who didn't, who didn't get to the back. You say these people, this church self, all these ushers and people want clean chair ye. You are simply saying they have not totally collected all your blessings. Stand and be doing something. Everybody in the house of God must be responsible for the advancement of God's work. I know thy work be older. Amen. Let me put it on record. I do Christians cannot. They don't and they can never earn the crown of God. I do Christian. No evangelism, no giving, no titan, no service, no, no standing to do something. No. They cannot earn the crown of God. Oh yeah, we are saved by grace, but we are rewarded for our works. Tell somebody for me, say we are saved by grace. Say no doubt about that. But as for reward, we are rewarded for our work. How do I know in Second Chronicles chapter 15? Second Chronicles 15, 7. Is it be ye strong, therefore let not your hand be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. He didn't say for the grace you carry shall be rewarded. For your work shall be rewarded. When you give to God what He wants, He will give you what you desire. When you give to God what He wants, He will give you what you desire. When you make to happen for God's kingdom, what God wants, He will make to happen for you what you have been praying about. That's number two wisdom tip. Number three is you must partner with others. Partner with others. You know what? Network. Did you notice that the man who was holding the axe to cut the beam in that story line was not alone in it? One not, wasn't the only one who went there. Why is that? I mean, ladies and gentlemen, the bigger your dream, the more people you need to fulfill it. Someone said, I, I owned it. That's my own wisdom. He said, one is too small a number for great accomplishment. One. You know what? When you are just alone, you can have great achievement. One is too small a number to achieve greatness. You must prayerfully, therefore, locate those to partner with. Those of like mind. Those of like talent. Who you can walk to serve God with. Those who are ordained, uh, divinely ordained to partner with you in progress and learn to excite them about getting involved. Amen to Jesus. Are you aware, ladies and gentlemen, look at me here. Am I wasting your time? God never planned for you to succeed alone. Never. God never planned for you to succeed alone. And you cannot do anything of real value alone what you lack is in the hand of somebody else what you lack everybody here everybody who is listening to me around the world and everyone everyone you you are a living witness of somebody else's contribution some people of my age you can't even remember all the teachers i remember my fourth teacher i did age was the name was my primary one teacher in 1965 
I remember my teacher in primary four. All right, 1968. That was at DMO. But I, do, I can't remember any other teacher. I don't know about you. I think one of the reasons was those two people were very close to me. My primary one teacher was my father's friend, so I, I was used to him. My primary four teacher was, you know, he, he developed partner friendship with me though I was very young. But all the other ones, I think, okay, I think my primary three teacher, I think they call him Adenino or Adenino, one of the two. How many people can you remember? But the contribution of your primary one teacher led you to primary two. Say, I hear that now. All the teachers in primary school contributed and they sent you to secondary school and so on and so forth. You are who you are today because of contribution of other people. What you lack is kept in the hand of someone else. Please, partner. Some people are just too rude to learn, too rude to gain, too rude to grow. They don't need anybody. Hallelujah. Ah. As from Abraham, the Bible says God called Abraham alone, but God didn't use him alone. If you are a rude fighter, always very rude, always insulting people, you won't like yourself. Everybody give me a smile now, just give me a smile. If I catch you not smiling, I will bring you out and I will show you the way your mouth is to everybody. Give me a smile now. So we have difficulty smiling. The way to smile, just hallelujah, just smile. Amen. It's important for you to learn to partner with other people. Are you aware, ladies and gentlemen, that there's nothing of value that you can do all alone? Teamwork is at the act of great accomplishment. That is an eternal law of significance. An eternal rule of significance. An eternal rule of significance. Number four, wisdom. What was number one? What was number one? Say it loud. Number two. Huh? Check your notes. We are doing open book test now. We want to know whether you know. Bible says, then shall you know, you know, uh, then shall you, you know, if you go on to know the Lord. Number three. Huh? These are wisdom's tips. Swallow them, own them, personalize them. And number four, very important, stay close to your God-chosen spiritual leader. Stay close. Stay close to your heavenly ordained spiritual leader. Now, the reason why is not far fetched. Satan is the adversary of God and man, and he will always want to checkmate you anytime, whenever you make a move to advance or to progress. He will always. Even if you are the Satan, if, if you are Satan, you want to do what he's doing. So he will now leave you without limits and limitation, and so you'll just be shiny and then we'll now be testifying. The devil will not want that. So he will always want to checkmate you and tell you. However, there's always an appointed man of God that God has chosen to speak to your life and to reverse, it, to reverse the, the losses of your life. A man to arrest satanic aggression and if there have been any loss, to compare recovery. That's the choice. And it's God who places people together. Now, look at me here. Are you aware? Hello. In the record of the word of God, Jesus Christ wept twice. How many times? Number one, he wept at the tomb of Lazarus because of unbelief. He wept. He was saying to them, he said, well, um, you see, this man, whereas they say in the day of resurrection, meaning he lay, what you see, he said, if that would have believed, should, as he was saying it, they were still doubting uh, one is eleven, one one be seven, one be six, one Jesus wept. I want people eat. Now the second time Jesus wept, wept, Bible say he saw people scattered as sheep without shepherd. He saw them how, and he wept because they were like sheep without shepherd. Why God knows that without a shepherd, the sheep will go astray, and the adversary will have them. Now, when God Almighty appoints for you a shepherd, a leader, take close to him. Now, the story would have ended differently for the sons of the prophet if Elijah, Elisha wasn't with them. 
Remember, they said, well, we now notice that this place is tight. We are growing number. The place is not growing, so let's expand it. And so what do you do? He said, well, we desire expansion, but let's get to Jordan by side, and then we, call, we, we want to make some takes. Elisha says, all right, Chief Elone, go. As they were going, I think the consultant, one of them said, <laughs> oh, God must go with us. He said, will you go with us? He said, well, I will go. Thank God he went with them. Because see, as they got there, they were trying to um, fell the beam. The Bible said, the axe head fell. Now, it wasn't just axe head falling. It was their cutting head that fell off. It was their hope of expansion that was dashed. It was the grace and the anointing that were terminated. The axe head fell. But thank God, Elisha was there. Now, look at me here. Now, sometimes you know God gives us shepherd but we sometimes we don't like them some of them some people like shepherd who are just magician is your choice you say, mm, mm, as it is now mm, they like deception you chose it some they like people who will tell them to bring candle, say, bring candle, one packet, and a glass of but you know, say, and then one carton of milk, and I will fast for it. Some people like that one. Some people like the magic that um, any scientist can create. They put candle inside but you. They put their name picture inside it. They like it. They like magician. People who are using six and seven sons of uh, books of Mo uh, send of Lawrence, D. Lawrence, what they call six and seven book of Moses. The book written by the magician D. Lauren. They, they, and they like it. Bing, bing, bing. They say, they say that pastor, wa, that, that the wa, Olusho, wa. But when you find a man who God has chosen, who God has called, in fact, they contempt him. He says he's not seeing well. Sometimes he just, he teaches so long. Sometimes he will just tell them that we want to do wisdom. We want to teach you wisdom. What do we need wisdom for? You don't need wisdom. Sorry about that. Your man of God is appointed by God and ordained by heaven to speak to your life. And look at me here. If it is given to you to hold on to his word, you will be kept. Bible says, believe in the Lord your God, you will be established as this pew is, as this speaker, you will be established. As this, um, this counter meter is, you will be established. We don't move them away from here. You will be established as a pew. But believe his prophet will prosper. Look at me here. If you cannot honor the man of God you are seeing, you cannot say to anybody you are honoring the God of the man you are not seeing. You cannot. If I say to you you will prosper, if you believe it, take it from me, you must prosper. But if you now begin to doubt it, you say, well, all the issues around us like this, you know how it will be. I really don't know. You see, Nigeria is bad. You said it. Thank God, the storyline was intact. Their life would have ended, you know, as a story damned. Their, their glory would have ended as, a, you know, smoke that visited out. And their contribution would have been terminated unceremoniously. You know, if, as they were, the act had fell and their prophet wasn't with them. Let me say to you, ladies and gentlemen, your prophet doesn't have to come to your bedroom. He doesn't have to follow you to your place of work or whatever. It's not compulsory, but at least let there be a heart knit with him. Obey him. Every normal man of God wishes that the word that we preach is believed and obeyed. If we preach about salvation, if you are not yet saved, believe and be saved. If we preach about prosperity, believe it. If we preach about glory, believe it. If we preach about righteousness, stand with it. That, that all that you do to, to, you know, to excite your man of God. Keep to a teaching. Don't look down on him. And ladies and gentlemen, I've often said, look at me, hello. Hello. Your man of God may be shorter than you. He may not be as rich as you are. You may have five children. He may have only one. He may not even have had a child. 
But if he's heavenly ordained man of God, that's the man who is appointed to speak the word of God to your life, to bespeak wonder and to reverse your losses. God said, I will return to you the year that the palm of the canker and the caterpillar have told him. It, it will use your man of God. But Bible said, by a prophet the Lord brought out Israel from Egypt and by a prophet he preserved them. Say, I hear that now. Say to me, say, I hear that now. Sometimes you know you have some spiritual leaders who are elusive. Some are backside fathers. Some are unavailable. But if that's who God has appointed you do all the elite. Amen. I, I have a man, I won't mention the name for purposes of, um, of being decent. All right? It's difficult to find. Difficult to see. But because this is a man, he laid hand on me like this. Now, I'll call, I have four of his numbers. I call, when I call, I call him, he has some time that he normally picks phone, 12, I mean 11 o'clock. I call. After some time, I've been calling and calling. I had to call the PR. I said, come on now. What happened? I couldn't get so and so. He said, ah, sir. He has not opened his phone this year. What am I looking for from him? Money? No. I've never ever gone to a man of God to say I need money. No. Pray for me. The grace you carry, speak to my life. Hello? Hello? If you don't have a man of God under which your head is kept by the power of God you are still a wanderer and you are making the heart of Jesus Christ to bleed so Jesus Christ wept he may not have the money that you have, no, he may not have the clout or the position, he may not even be able to he may not be apt to speak the way he may not be cockney the way you are he may not sound um, gracious as you are but come on now, if heaven appointed him, choose him so To, dis, to be rude to him or to disabuse him or to, you know, to disobey him is tatamount to disobeying God. Amen. Your cutting edge is found back. Recovery locates you. Restoration finds you out when you find a man. Lay the word upon you. What I always wish, and check my protocol. The prayer we pray when we want to leave. The, the simple prayer. Lord, as we go, speak to us, speak through us. Hallelujah. I, I want my people to read that road and be jumping with that word. In the stream of the one week. Say, my man of God says one soul. Amen. Man of God says one soul. If I told you your enemy will not have you, take it like that from me. Because you must believe that as a captain, I'm ahead of you. I'm standing ahead of you to marshal. If they want to attack anybody, let them come to me. They're free to say, my man of God says one so. I told you when God said to me, this supernatural expansion, you take it, you have it, you reject it, it remove away from you. And this is your life. Look at me. This is your life. Help me say to somebody, say this is your life. Say this is your life. There can be corporate embarrassment when your mouth works against you. If your mouth digs the grave for, you know, your losses, if your mouth works against you, we, we may not like it. But it is your life. So, please, be close to your man of God. You may not always see him around. You may not always have him visit you. He may never have visited you. But please, let your heart be neat. Read his book. Check is what when he preach on, on Facebook, watch it. All right, share it, carry it along. If it's not there, his spirit, the spirit that works with him is there. And come on now, if he's your man of God, he's not looking for girlfriend. If he's truly a man of God, he's not looking for girlfriend. He's not looking for your money. He's rather looking for your wellness. Finally, number five. Persevere. Power what? Persevere. That's the last wisdom tip. This would they kept at it. In Romans chapter number 5, verses 3 to 5, Bible says, not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation work at patient, patient experience, experience hope, and hope make it not ashamed because the love of God is spread abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit which is given unto us. Amen. Now, sometimes people try and try and try 
to expand. But forces beyond us want to stall us. Forces that want to steal our vision. Forces that want to steal our hope. Forces that want to steal our finances. Forces that want to sap our energies and our zeal and our connection. Forces that want to terminate other instruments of expansion. However, never faint. Help me shout and say, never faint. I don't know if it were in today's world. They thought he did bad like that. He made the target and the act head fell off. And he sank. As, you know, how many of you know that there are some losses? If you want to follow it through, you lose your limb and your life for it. That was like what happened here. The act head fell into the bottom, the bed of River Jordan. If you check Bible historian, Jordan was very, very deep. It's not meant for ordinary, you know, common diver. If the son of the prophet said, Ah, my heart fell, and he fell inside, he would have brought out, brought him out dead, suffocated. Now, as it were, some people now, if it happened like that, they would just be, they would now put their hand on their head. They would be bemoaning themselves. Even when their prophet said, What's happening? You say, Shalom Washa. Is there God? Does he not know that I borrowed this axe? Prophet Elisha, Prophet Elisha, I think God has left you. Didn't God know that I borrowed it? Taban Sukun Yekamarino. When you are crying, be seen. If you are not seeing why you are crying, you will enter into a dungeon. Let know that God is. He is alive. He can do anything. And so persevere no matter what happens. Because whatever happens to you is to work for your experience and experience hope and hope that will not make you ashamed. The Bible says to us, for Abraham is it is target not at the promise of God through unbelief. He was hoping against hope. Amen. Look at me, God people. Your better days will come. If I'm your prophet, I've said it like this repeatedly. You will not die like this. I'm still saying it with all my heart. I say you will not die like this. You may have tried and tried. The devil may have sapped your wisdom, your, your strength. He may have removed your, your energy. Your joy may have been robbed. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. God is alive. He's still there. And he's still at work. His work doesn't change. He knows what he will do. And look at me, God people. This is the word of God unto you. When is your turn? Is your turn. Let me say to somebody, say, when is your turn? Say, when is your turn? It's your turn. Say, tell me, say, when is, when is God's word? It must work wonder. Say, tell me louder. I want to hear you. Okay, say to me, say, when is God's word? It's God's word. It must work wonder. It must. Uh -huh. When is your turn? It's your turn. Nobody can add anything to it. And look at my eyes here, everybody. Wherever you are, look at me here. Nobody and nothing can stall the plan of God for your life. Whatever God wants to do in your life, He will go ahead and do. He will. Even when it takes Him doing some embarrassingly crude miracle, if you like. Ask from any physicist that and say to them that iron axe floated upon water. They say, No, there is not possible. Could possible. They say when she Bible here, honey, he said the law of flotation is against that. The prophet said, Where did he fall? He said, Here. He located it. Where did you miss it? Is here. Where did it get lost? Is here. What is it? This where did it disconnect from you? Here. And the Bible said to me, the prophet went and cut the wood, a branch of a wood that represents Jesus. Jesus is the word. Isaiah chapter 11, the root out of the stomach of Jesse, the root, the, 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 the word is the, is the wood, all right? He cut it. He put the word there. And the word, the wood naturally sank and went down as the word touches, touches the iron. The iron said, no, I must respond. What did the prophet say? He said, I must come up. And the, the axe head began to swim. I'm looking at someone here today. Something unusual will happen to you. Something legendary will happen to you. The Almighty God will baptize you with incredible miracle. Something that will boggle the mind. Something that people will look at and, and say that we are baffled. We are dazzled. Baffled.
baffled and dazzled. God Almighty will do it for you. I say, my God will do it for you. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the iron was swimming. Now, you see, God is very creatively, enigmatically majestic. Now, the earth air was swimming, and the man of God says, stretch out your hand and pick it. So the iron even swam to the reach of his hand. Hey! The thing just was swimming. Umbo, umbo, umbo. The man says, stretch out your hand. I'm commanding you, ladies and gentlemen. Expansion is swimming to you. Your, your takes are found ready. Found ready to expand. Your expansion, your extension is made ready. Stretch out your hand and take it. I say, take it. Take your progress. I say, take it. Take your progress. Take it. Take your breakthrough. Take it. Take your wonders. Take it. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you will not remain the same again. In the name of the Lord Jesus, what you have been praying for shall wear land in your hand this year. Every embarrassment, every losses, everything that would have brought you reproach, everything that would have made you an incurable debtor, heaven will sack them this year. Whatever you lost, you are gaining them. This is your year for expansion. So shall it be. As you apply this wisdom, this wisdom will support you and stand with you. In your career, you will expand. I say in your career, you will expand. Babala ma show yo ba refiato milada da kwada karama la pata. I see God sitting you. God will enthrone you. I say oh, God will enthrone you. You will begin to call the shot in the name of the Lord. God will enthrone you. In your health, you will expand. So surely, you will expand. Your name will begin to count. When they mention your name, they will remember you for good. In the name of the Lord Jesus, this year is your year. Your tongue has turned up. Sears the Lord of hosts. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the word and the wisdom of God today. Give God a praise. Properly praise him. Properly praise him. Praise him properly. Wapala wa shoyo you. Wapala ma shoyo. Zakada. Toki brana mosohan. Kwaka malakwa jagama riataha. Give God a praise. Give him the glory. It's worthy to be praised. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. I like you. I want you to, even if you don't want to walk for too long, don't change your leg wherever you are. Don't do like this. Say, Lord, I thank you. Say, Papa, God, I thank you. And thank God the Father. Thank God the Son. He hear me well. He hear me very, very well. Thank God the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, I thank you. All right, go ahead in one minute. Just say, Lord, I, I thank you, Papa God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I thank you. Thank you for your readiness to walk in my life. My takes are found ready to expand. I will not be a disappointment. My takes are found ready to expand. Holy Spirit, I thank you for your readiness to walk in my life. Thank you, Spirit. I thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for walking in my life. Give God a praise. Give God a glory. Thank you for the supernatural expansion of this year. Holy Spirit, I thank Holy you. Spirit, I thank you. I thank you. I give you glory. You Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? Yes, sir. So we say, Father. Father. I thank you. I thank you. You have found my stake. You have found my stake. Ready for expansion. Ready for expansion. This year. This year. I will expand. I will expand. You said it. You said it. I believe it. I believe it. I will not be a disappointment. I will not be a disappointment. I will expand in all ramifications. I will expand. Spiritually and materially. Spiritually and materially. In all come. Open your mouth and turn that to prayer. In the name of Jesus. In the turn that to prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, you have found my state. Pray for me. This year, O oh Lord, I call you for your Lord. expansion in all ramifications, spiritual expansion, financial expansion, material expansion, in the mighty name of Jesus. This year, I shall enjoy the expansion. You have said it that I am not doing it. You have said it that I hold on to it. I shall expand this year. 
in all areas of my life, in all ramifications, I shall expand in the name of Jesus, spiritually, financially, materially, physically, in my business, I shall expand this year, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Pick up yourself again. It is now your turn to sing. Amen. Whatever has not been working before, must start working in your life right now. But don't forget, if you have not given your life to Jesus, do so today. Do so today. What God honors in the life of his people is his word. He says he has um, honored his word above his very name. Right, that's God for you. That's God for you. If you are sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, for you to be born again and you reject him, you put yourself in a very hopeless position. And I reject that for you in Jesus' name. No matter what your religious persuasions have been, no matter what you are born into, you don't have to die a struggler. Give your life to Jesus today. Be born again. Repent of your sins. And as you embrace Jesus Christ, you are embracing success. And I am about to say again, the God who has been helping me will begin to help you. You will begin to succeed at the Almighty God. You will not fail again. In Jesus' name. One more time, congratulations. I'll see you on this channel at the same time next week by the grace of God. But don't forget, you are a champion. It is well with you. I say it is well with you. God bless you. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. God has done it several times before, and He will do it again. And you know what? You're the very next in line for a miracle. The Lord is touching you, and your story will change dramatically. Freedom across the airwaves. It is well you have come. For inquiries, testimonies, and further prayers, call the following numbers. 08 0803-2801-03. 0803-973-9703. 0803-713-9711. 0802-302-9179. 0805-718-1233. Join us 6 p.m. every Wednesday for our communion service. Join us 7 a.m., 9 a.m., and 11 a.m. every for Sunday special encounter and word explosions at Lagos, Abeokuta Expressway, Timidiri, Songoata, Nigeria. is the hallmark of the kingdom. Have you sad story of barrenness, sickness, poverty, and oppression? Marital delay. Change your glorious testimony. Meet with Jesus and encounter the Holy Spirit for a definite change at the Moment of Victory program. Hold it every second Saturday of the month at Rema Christian Church and Towers Campground, City of Zion, along Lagos Abelkuta Expressway. Wow, see me. Time is 10 a.m. You can still dance to the victory song. Only believe. Ministry, Bishop Taiwo and Pastor Mrs. Iriti Akiola. God is a God of victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Rema Christian Church and Towers International invites you to a great time of refreshing, a power encounter in God's awesome presence. Be inspired and empowered through the word of power coming from the throne. Be ushered into the realm of possibilities as God steps into your situations and circumstances. Be who he created you to be, victorious, triumphant, and joyous. Yes, here, the word is unquestionably triumphant. Ministering Bishop Taiwo and Pastor Mrs. Zireti Akinola every Sunday, 7 a.m., 9 a.m., and 11 a.m. at Champion Peace Cathedral, Rema Christian Church, Temidere Songo, Taogun State, Nigeria. You can also freely engage the power of covenant blessings and divine intervention by partnering with us and sowing your seed for the furtherance of this kingdom work to the following Rema Christian Church account. 
Fidelity Bank Account 606-004-4403 Guaranteed Trust Bank Account 012-497-2099 God bless you richly. Jesus is the King of Kings. Thank you for joining us today on Freedom Across the Airwaves. Freedom Across the Airwaves is a production of Rema Christian Church in Tars, 127 Rema Avenue of Lagos Road, the immediate sun water of the state. Be a part of our Sunday worship at the impartition service, 7 a.m. to 8.30 a.m., as well as 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Every Tuesday's Encounter Miracle Service, 10 a.m. to 12 noon. It's an interdenominational miracle service where we minister to the barren, the sick, and many more. For prayers and counseling, Call 003 328 0103 or 005 718 1233 or 003 397 0785. You can also join Bishop Taiwo Akinola on Facebook www.facebook.com slash Bishop Akinola or follow us on Twitter www.twitter.com slash Bishop Akinola. God bless you as you do so. the next in line for a miracle. Join Bishop Dr. Taiwo Akiola and Pastor Mrs. Ireti Akiola of the Rema Christian Church and Towers. Please invite others. Our God is awesome. Jesus Christ is Lord.